Hello everybody, this is D. King Bay, your book granny here with the book review for you. Oh yeah, today I'm reviewing The Shadow Casket by Chris Wooding. This is the second book in a duology. So as always, this is a no spoiler zone, but that's no spoiler for the second book. So if you have not read The Ember Blade, you do need to, you might want to go bye-bye because there will be spoilers for the Ember Blade inside of this uh, for uh, book two's review. So, you know, it is what it is. And I'm going to tell you about it. I got to have some stuff from Ember Blade. Um, both books are very good. I will put the review up there for the uh, Ember Blade for you, okay? So, let's recap the Ember Blade. Okay, in the Ember Blade, we have the Ossians. And we have the Crota, and there are other types of uh, countries too, but these are the main two. And the Crotans have had their, their foot on everybody's neck, okay, basically for like 30 years. Let's just say that. And they have been like treating everybody like crap. We're just going to put it out there, like crap. So the Ossians, they had this thing called the Ember Blade. And whoever gets that, it's like their symbol of freedom and their pride and things like that. So we have some rebels who thought if they steal this Ember Blade, you know, then that's going to get their people the will to fight back. Okay. So that's what happens in the first book. Our, we had, it was a found family and it was a heist. Okay. That was the main things of it. Very good book. Like I say, this is a really, really good book. I highly suggest you read it. So they did end up getting the Ember Blade by the end. Now what happened, the next book takes place about three years later now remember they stole this ember blade thinking okay this is finally going you know this is going to get our people to fight back it's been three years and they're not fighting back <laughs> as a matter of fact things are worse for everybody i mean the crotons they were bad before now they're just horribly bad awfully bad horrible awful awful horrible okay so now we have our our group now, in the first book, not everybody lives. So the people who did live, the rebels who did live, they're still together. And they're trying to figure out, okay, what is our next move? Because they've been, like, roaming the countryside trying to, you know, protect this blade. But, and they're spreading the word that, yeah, we have the blade and stuff like that. But, you know, like I said, the people aren't really fighting back. So how are they going to get the people to fight back? So that's basically what the casket the shadow casket is about the our folks who did survive like i said in the first book not everybody survived so the ones that did survive they go out there and you know they're doing the steps that they believe is they need to do in order to make um the uh re rebellion happen and it's not just like i said it's not asia and crotons it's expanded to other countries too okay so like i said i did like both of these books very very much i thought this was a really good duology. They're both long. You know, I like a thick book, right? This one was like 800 pages. And the first book's like 500 and something pages. So they're both nice long books. But even though they're long, they're not filled with fluff. Okay, I don't like long fluffy books. These are actually good content in them. The pacing was really good. The, the world building, you can see and hear and smell. I mean, Chris Wooding does that thing. He is really, really good with that. Now, let me talk about some things I don't like first because there's not many of them, okay? One, you don't always have to have everybody having a romance, okay? And not everybody in the book had a romance, but if you are going to put in a romance, please. And you know, this is one of my pet peeves, folks. Don't have it being something that's so simple that a simple conversation can get over and don't have it be something that someone, okay, I don't know how I feel or how I think, but I'm going to tell you how you feel and you think. I don't like that. I mean, don't don't have that silliness. And there was a little bit of that silliness in there, but thank goodness the romance was the itty bitty teeny 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 tiny bit. My suggestion is he skipped them romances <laughs> in his future book because the book would have been just as good without that in it. You know what I'm saying? It would have been better without that in it because it wouldn't have got that part when it got on my nerve. But like I said, it was a real little itty teeny 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 tiny bit of the book. Okay. Another thing is there's a there's a series of events that happen, okay? And they he repeated this series of things, and I'm not gonna tell you what it is because I don't wanna spoil it, too many times so it became redundant. Like, oh, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, oh, here we go again. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's like, let's say four out of five times he did this. You're like, okay, yeah. And it's like the fifth time, he's like, oh, let me shake it up a little bit so they don't expect 
No, you just keep doing these things over. So there were parts of that felt a little redundant, you know what I'm saying? So yeah, that, that, that wasn't too much fun, okay? I love a book that shows you the bad person's point of view and they did it again. They, they have some of the bad guys and they literally show you the book chapters in the bad person's point of view so you can see what's going on and see their point of view and how their their world view and things like that i love books when they do that when they take the time and that's probably why they're so long too while they take the time to do that because i want to know what everybody doing i also like that all the heroes weren't too heroish i mean some uh, i couldn't stand, i'm like oh i can't stand her i'm just like oh my goodness she's a horrible person and you know what there are a lot of horrible people out there, so it, it worked. So, ooh, so it worked. So I don't mind that. I, I actually liked that they weren't all likable. Okay, so that's that's a very good thing because I know a lot of times you you read about these books and like, oh, they have to be likable. No, no, they don't. They just have to be realistic. I had some people in there I like, some people I don't. I love that they bring back um, Grub. He's like my favorite person in the book. I absolutely love him, and they show the relationships between people like i may have this relationship with grub while someone else has this relationship with grub so our two understandings of this same person are completely different and we have our reasons for feeling this way and it works i just love that and it's not just grub i'm just using him as an example so the character rate the characterization in this book is really good it went from the first book to the second it was strong the plot the plot was pretty strong now granted there were some things that were redundant in what they had happened. I'm like, oh, here we go. But, you know, it wasn't so much that it ruined the book or anything like that. It's just something that I had picked up on. And I was like, uh oh, here we go. And it happened again. Okay. So I did want to point that out. But for the most part, it was a very good book. The action scenes, you know, I like action. Shoot, they was getting down. So I really like the action. The action scenes were very well crafted. Um, I like that. Um, the different characters went through all these different emotions. I mean, some some of our heroes, they're scared as hell. I mean, they're just like completely terrified, you know what I'm saying? Or you get some that are just, you know, he's just so sad. I mean, it's just, Harold, y'all remember him? His, in the first book, uh, his lover, Annika, Orica, she she was died in that one. So he's dealing with that grief in the second book i mean they they really take you through all the emotion of course grub is my comic relief so i love that they had characters to fill in every spot and you get to go through the gambit the full gambit of all of the emotions so i was saying again i did enjoy both books that's it because I, I don't want to get into the plot <laughs> you know what i'm saying but both books were very good i highly recommend them both um, of course, read your Ember Blade first, okay? And I like that it was a duology that actually ended in the right spot. And I will say Ember Blade ended in a good spot where I didn't feel like it was a cliffhanger, but you know there's going to be a second book. Same thing with uh, the Shadow Casket. If they wanted to make another book in this world, they could, but this is a complete book. You don't feel like, you know, oh, no, I'm missing out on something. At least I didn't. So I like it when you let a duology be a duology. <laughs> yeah. There are plenty of characters so yeah of course they can create uh, additional books in this um in this um world but mm, i'm happy i'm happy and if they create another book in this world i'll read it too but i don't think you're gonna have to be up you're gonna have to have to read these books first if they do it right okay so that is it one review down a million to go <laughs> you guys have a great day bye bye